Hi there, I'm Ian from LearnPracticalDisc.com and, and welcome. Today I wanted to introduce the housing uh, analysis section of the free ebook. And I got to thinking about this um, and really I can't introduce this properly unless I talk to you a little bit about some of the structures, uh, the data structures in a GIS. Now these are very important and I reckon if you can understand these and understand them in your bones, uh, you have just got a, a much, much better chance of when you actually start getting your fingers onto these things to, to having a, um, uh, to doing so much better and, and having a better understanding. So let's look at these data structures because they're so, so relevant to this uh, housing analysis stuff that we're about to look at. Three data constructs in a GIS. We have points. It's my rickety board, okay? Can you see that? Points. Yes. Behind there. Uh, points are things like power poles, telephone boxes, telephone box uh, and a house. All right. They're things that you can go up to with a, uh, a global positioning system and go whack, bating, they're in there. That's we, we can map them that way. We have this other construct that's not really um, so relevant at, at, um, for this type of housing analysis, but these are lines. All right, lines are things like roads, power lines. You can tell I don't write very much. I'm, I'm mostly uh, on, on the keyboard. And power lines, not so relevant to what we're talking about today. But the third thing that's very relevant is this other thing called a polygon. Now, what I just drew is not a polygon because a polygon is enclosed. A polygon is basically an enclosed area that has lots and lots of lines in it. So it could be a square, it can be, you know, odd, any odd shapes. Okay? And a polygon is something like um, a post postcode or zip code, uh, suburb. Um, or a block of land. Block. CK. Right? Alright, now I'm going to cross out, if I could find my rubber, which is here, I'm going to cross out this line because I'm not really wanting to deal with that today. Okay? So, the really, really interesting thing about these two constructs in terms of housing analysis is that a point can sit inside a polygon. Big deal. Well, it is a very big deal because a house can sit inside a postcode, it can sit inside the suburb, and it can sit inside a block of land. What that means is that um, in terms of housing market analysis and the housing market analysis that uh, we're, I'm about to talk about, if we're talking about, you know, 150,000, 200,000 house sales, um, it becomes, this idea becomes very, very important because if, 
you are to take just the information that's provided by the real estate agents or realtors or whatever you would like to call them, it's often pretty inaccurate. You have to, and, and this is a thing that I'm, I'm going to harp on and harp on and harp on with you, is data quality. You really need to understand this idea of data quality. Understanding the pedigree of the data you're working with. Understanding the logic that goes behind it. So a real estate agent reports a house sale at the time that the house is sold to government. This is how it happens in Australia and I'll bet you bottom dollar it's how it happens in lots and lots of places around the world. The problem with this is that maintaining government records is not a real estate agent's job, right? They're not interested in this. Well, all they're interested in is the fact they've made a sale and, um, you know, filling out the paperwork. So what you tend to get is we all know that um, real estate agents, are, their job is to sell and their job is to get the best price for a um, piece of real estate for their client which is great, but some of the ways they do that is to be a little bit imaginative with some of, some of the ways that they describe what they've got going on, what they're selling. So, I'll do this in a different way. So, if we have a, um, hang on. If we have, right, a suburb that looks like that, and We'll call that mid-class, middle-class. Middle-class demographic. And an adjoining one, we'll call it posh. All right? And a real estate agent selling a house there, at that point there on the border, they're more likely to describe it as being in the posh suburb than in the middle-class suburb because they're more likely to get a better price for it. But what this means in terms of the, the data quality that we're interested in is that we get under-reporting in, um, in this suburb and we get over-reporting in this suburb. So if we're just to, or, or sorry, and we get those, but not only that is the real estate agent is actually entering the wrong address into, into the system. So when you go to match that address in a geographical information system, it's not going to be there because the suburb, it's meant to be in there, but the suburb's described as being in there, and you're going to get a miss, uh, an error, a matching error. Excuse me, I'll just grab some water. The thing is, though, if you, as a GIS person, can find a way to get that dot reported in the correct suburb, there are so many different things that you can do. All right? Instead of only reporting by these enormous areas that you know, have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of houses in them, right? You can report them by much smaller areas if, if you would care to. Okay? And this is what we're going to be doing in this housing, um, with this uh, housing market analysis. Is our first phase is to get these um, house sales as dots on maps so that we can get them in the correct place and then we can relate them to any shape we want. And when I say any shape we want, this idea of the point in the polygon allows us to relate a house sale to a suburb, once it's correctly identified, to any suburb, to boundary, to any um, zip code boundary, to any um, local government boundary, to any census boundary, to any boundary you might want to stick around it. And you're going to see 
In the example that we um, use in the learn in the uh, learn practical just free ebook, um, what you'll see is what we're using is a um, street map grid to report some of the sales. So anyway, I just wanted to talk to you about these really really simple concepts because they are very very important. Um, if you've got them licked you're a long, long way to along the path of um, having that conceptual understanding that's going to stand you in really, really good stead to understand the GIS stuff. Okay, so point in Polygon, data quality are the really, really big points that I wanted to talk to you about. Okay, that's it from me. Ian from learnpracticalgist.com. The next videos, in the next couple of videos, I'm going to talk about those um, uh, examples of housing market analysis that are in your ebook, but I just wanted to set you up with this before I started. Okay, cheers.